Hello everybody and welcome to the revision seminar on the, yeah, where are we standing at um, demo scene out of coding, like the initiative to enlist and inscribe the uh, demo scene as UNESCO intangible cultural heritage on an international level. So far we already made it successfully onto the lists in uh, of intangible cultural heritage in or the directories of national culture in uh, Finland and also in uh, Germany li just last week ago. So that's that's uh, an amazing success. I'm very happy uh, that we that that was possible, and uh, and I'm super happy and humbled for the support received over the last year with many, many people supporting us on the Art of Coding Discord and with applications in other countries. And so within the next hour, I am I want to put you a little bit in the picture where we are standing. So what happened uh, uh, in the last year at Art of Coding, where we are standing right now, um, what is next and also where we need your help and of course where how you can support and join us and i'm very thankful for each and everybody of you who is supporting us in the demo groups in the demo organizers demo party organizers if you don't have much time just go onto the website demo scene the art of coding.net go on contact and there you have three four links with the email addresses of us as contact details but most importantly the last link is the link to the discord so um, and there on the discord you will find mostly uh, channels for the different countries so just to sign up drop into the different uh, channels of the countries where you are or you are willing to support or just say you are there and maybe you can do something and uh, then over time usually if there's two or three or four people ha uh, if they wrote then this kind of conversation gets going and um, activity starts because and that's also a little bit already a look into the future from this revision. We want to give it like two more years for joining for as many countries or people in countries to join us with the applications of the first round and then um, uh, push for the international application. First, I'd like to introduce a bunch of people themselves from Switzerland, from France, from the Finnish group who was behind the applications there and uh, from Poland and uh, also Germany. And as I didn't introduce myself yet, I'm Tobias Kopka or Melkor in, in the demo scene of Group Howjob. Um, and on Twitter, I'm more under the handle uh, Didax. Uh, in the normal work world uh, before the pandemic, I I'm a conference director for game developer conferences. So same kind of community, always creators, always strong tech bias and creative bias from different domains, uh, because that's, yeah, I think um, what is directly imp impacted by grow having grown up in a demo scene in Germany near Paderborn. And uh, yeah, I, my way into the demo scene was really via people in neighbor neighboring um, villages like Triple uh, X at uh, from Agnostic Front at that time. Nowadays, of course, How Job, Toby, and uh, many more people in Paderborn like Fuzzle, Hellfire, and people also who are all over the place nowadays. Um, and nowadays, of course, Germany part, uh, in, in Cologne, part of the Evoke team and also with Digital Kultur e.V. And co-initiator of the, in, of the initiative uh, Art of Coding, which is kind of the umbrella to get the different um, countries uh, synced and coordinated a little bit later on if it goes to getting the um, international application ready. And uh, my co-initiator uh, of um, the initiative is Andreas Lange, co-founder of the Computer Games Museum, but he can introduce himself right away. Hello, I'm Andreas Lange and um, I'm the co-initiator together with uh, Tobias Didax um, of Art of Coding. Um, we started at end of 2018, as you already know probably. Um, in my um, former professional life, I was uh, founding director of the Computer Game Museum in Berlin uh, in 1997 
and I was its uh, curator until 2018. And um, after uh, that, um, I um, switched to the uh, European Federation of um, Archi Game Archiving Institutions in Europe, FGAM. Um, and um, in that role, I'm also responsible for the international coordination of the uh, applications. Um, as you know, um, the final um, plan is um, to submit an application for the international um, listing. And um, that's, of course, uh, something which is a little bit in the future. But so thank you, Andreas. And let's also introduce some more people from different countries who helped us uh, or are helping us right now. Okay, so um, I'm Angeli Knerovic. Angelo, formerly Exodus, uh, these days often hide in Aberration Creations. I'm technically a coder, although recently I, I, I wandered to graphics and design and, and other stuff. I'm Luisa, I'm a part of the demo team for 16 years. I'm a member of Pobrain and Rabenauge. I'm a front developer as a profession, finishing my studies on the side and loving music and vinyl records. <laughs> That's it. And I'm older, a bit older than C64. Yeah, my, my handle is Kudrix in, in this demo scene and my real name is Andre Kudra. I'm an IT guy at heart. I started my career with uh, Commodore C64 and uh, later on Amiga. So I'm, I'm, uh, as you may guess, uh, more in the in the old schooler uh, fraction of the demo scene. But obviously, I, I love everything that comes out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm mainly an IT guy at heart. So I have uh, studied business administration, but I'm very close to the IT topics. And uh, yeah, for my private uh, personal life, I, I enjoy computing in many different ways. I have a collection about, um, well, old school computers and this good stuff. And in my, in my business life, I run a consulting company for information security topics. My name is uh, Cécile uh, and uh, Anne Rose, but uh, all knows me as Cécile. I am nearly for, uh, 40 years old and I have, I've been the demo center for uh, 22 years. I have, I, I have participated in demo parties in France only. With my uh, association called Tripla, I am organizing a, a demo party called Alchemy every two years since uh, 2003. Since then, uh, we have been uh, bringing the old school community with uh, our demo party. Uh, to the Atari, Amiga, and abstract communities. We are always uh, trying to provide a friendly atmosphere of uh, sharing and discovery. The demo teams uh, coming to third event takes advantage of our party to continue making good old school demos. Uh, well, hello everybody. I'm Philippe Dubois, a French engineer. I'm the founder and president of the French association called mo5.com, which is one of the most active uh, French association about uh, digital patrimony. And uh, we have been involved uh, within the, the association for about 20 years about preserving computing history, video, game, video games history, and uh, making a lot of events, mainly in France, but not only in France, uh, because we have about 500 uh, exhibitions uh, we have been conducting since 20 years. So we are very active on the field. And uh, I'm myself uh, someone who, who has lived, uh, in fact, the digital revolution into our society with the bringing of computers, of video games and demos. Uh, I, I'm a demo. Uh, I'm not a demo center, but I'm a demo, demo fan somewhere. I like demos very much, uh, and uh, I've been like studying uh, the evolution of the demo scene in France for for always, in fact. And uh, I could say that uh, I'm the, one of the few people in France uh, who have committed an exhibit, 
an exhibition about uh, the demo uh, here in France the, that, uh, that was called Demo Art uh, in uh, 2010, uh, I believe so. Hey there, my name is uh, Andre Joos. In the demo scene, I'm known as Unlock. And well, I've been a demo scene since many, many years. Um, some of them were filled with more activity than others, obviously. But uh, generally, I've been around for many years. Um, I have been organizing the famous Bünzli and Demo Days, demo parties in Switzerland, also for many years. And uh, earlier, I was the main editor of the Pain Disc Mag. Um, but I started my, started out my uh, personal demo scene journey on a C64, and uh, I'm still a big fan. Uh, but in my opinion, the demo scene, however, is a, is a truly multi-platform uh, thing. Um, at some point in time, we have started Echtzeit Digitale Kultur, uh, which is the Swiss association for and from the demo scene. Yes, hi. Uh, I'm Satu, or in scene, I'm known as Mu. Uh, I'm part of Yumalauta, Paraguay, um, and some other groups also. Well, in the most scene, I've been around over 15 years. I've been organizing parties, um, doing graphics, photo, um, video entries, and also a little bit of coding. So, kind of done different different kinds of stuff and for me demo scene is not just a hobby it's basically a way of life it's most of my um friends are in a demo scene so it's really important and and also right now um i work in a heritage uh, sector so at this moment um I must at study leave on from my job as a conservator at the National Museum of uh, Finland, and I'm an IT intern in Board of Antiquities in Finland. <laughs> so I really work with um, IT stuff and also with uh, cultural heritage. And in Finland right now, there is a lot of talk about how should you preserve. Um, Media, media art and uh, digital cultural historical um, heritage. So that's something that I'm also kind of contributing and trying to get the conversation going because it's not really straightforward how you should approach to this kind of materials. Uh, Yuka, who has his camera in a secret room, so we will have this lovely picture. Yuka uh, or Grendel, please introduce yourself. Hello all, I'm Jukka, Jukka Kaupinen, as professionally some may know or remember me. But in real life, the only people who know me as Jukka are, are my mother and, bro and brother. Everybody else just knows me as Grendel. And the full, ver full version is Grendel of Byte Rapper. So I have kind of been in the demo skin thing for quite a while now, from the 86 or so. So basically, demo skin is it's the other family, white rappers and white rappers is one family because we founded the group in the '86 and we have been together ever since. And I have so much friends and uh, accomplices in crime <laughs> in the demo skin from all these decades. And uh, as the profession goes, I have my Let's say professional connection with, connection with Demoskin has been from the journalist side. I have been writing about Demoskin since the late 80s, so it has to be dozens or hundreds of news pieces and articles and party reports in the big commercial magazines, actually, and with the Finnish Museum of Games, which we founded some four years ago. It has all of the founders are also more or less in the demo skin. So the whole museum has also the demo skin side. There is the Finnish game side and there is the demo skin side. We have had many demo skin events and uh, exhibitions in the museum. So 
using the museum, we have been able to preserve and show off a lot of demo skin history in Finland. Markku Reunanen, uh, been uh, around in the demo scene since around 1990 when I saw my first demos and um, then a year after that we founded our first group and I've been a coder and a bad graphician since then and uh, yeah I, I go with the handle Mark U if you've ever cross, uh, come across my works um, but uh, in this project, I, I um, was asked to participate because I've been doing also research on the demo scene, not just uh, as a hobbyist, but also also as, a, as an academic. And uh, then, first of all, uh, I quite didn't want to take up any more duties, so I wasn't very enthusiastic about it. But then, after a while of thought, I, I realized that, okay, maybe I can contribute here and maybe this is something I should be doing. So, then I found a more positive mindset and uh, then ended up writing the Finnish application text and finding the supporters with the help from uh, the rest of the team. But yeah, in my daily job, um, I'm a um, lecturer of digital media, new media, and uh, and uh, that of course stems also from the demo scene background, this general interest in computers and flashy things and, 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 and sound and, and graphics. So you have seen now a bunch of people helping us in, in great places, uh, working on submissions and uh, supporting the initiative. And there's also more people like in Denmark, in Hungary, thinking about it. In Portugal, people are wondering if they should go to the next step. And in, in the Netherlands, actually, things are already looking good. So we will see. But always like more people helping is absolutely um welcomed because it helps not only regarding the work but also like keeping the motivation up so let's speaking about motivation let's look a little bit what people are saying what is motivating or what also thoughts are behind um, moving forward with uh, out of coding or in general of course the bigger thing which is more important regarding the scene uh, cutting uh, a demo is an art uh, like another heart Uh, so we need to get out of the shadow of this. So I support half of coding because uh, it makes sense for me. We need to preserve uh, before everything disappeared, uh, like people uh, in uh, demo communities uh, disappeared. I talk about this project uh, with many friends who share the same enthusiasm and energy like uh, Boob, Olivier Charvet, uh, like uh, Popty Team organizer of the annual VIP demo party in France will be William Lamy, organizer of Numerica, Chandra, Charles Sautier, organizer of LTP, and other demo center and demo party organizer. So um, uh, it's, um, it's important for me uh, for support this. Well, I've been a senior for a long time and I believe this that demo scene is a huge part of digital culture and history. And with this project, I hope it to be recorded as such. I was growing up in the, in the 80s when, when everyone got excited about home computing. So I kind of uh, got sidetracked with uh, all the different activities uh, in my life uh, for a while. But then in 2015, I found my way back to, um, to, this, uh, to the scene, basically and uh, started uh, with my uh, my first encounter of revision in in 2015 in Saarbrücken so this was a was a great uh, happening and event for me and uh, yeah so i i want to take this uh, momentum uh, that i that i got there and i'm i'm actually i'm since then i'm basically trying to visit as many as events as i can and make myself useful in in various areas um and uh, yeah i want to continue with this uh, spirit and hopefully be able to to get uh, support for for people who want to get started with out of coding, want to write their their own applications in their countries. That's the reason I'm I'm involved and uh, take the take the momentum and and grow the momentum. One one little pro that I've been thinking about is this uh, possibility of, of getting back to your parents and and those 
those hours and hours that I spent in front of the computer and, and you didn't understand, like here it is, like here you can see, this is digital cultural heritage. That's the stuff I was doing, not just, not just something silly as you thought. This has been exactly the same thing that now I can actually, to my colleagues, I can say, hi, this is my hobby and it's actual cultural historical heritage, <laughs> at least in Finland now. Um, and also, I think there has been some kind of a pressure. There has been um, national archives has been asking to get some demos from the um, from the assembly to get into their archives. So I think it's also given a little bit of pressure for the kind of um, the institutional um, uh, places to actually preserve the demos in heritage. So I think that is also very positive. And for me, I've always thought that if th this is totally cultural heritage and this is important. So I see that this is just something that is making that um, statement stronger. So yeah, I I'm, I'm seeing also it's not just about the demos and demos. There is a lot of uh, talk about media art and, and the kind of digital heritage that is coming all the time. So I, I think we are kind of waking up to that fact that our heritage is kind of changing. And there is a lot of uh, digital cultural cultural, historical heritage that we should preserve that is not really um, preserved right now. So I also see that this is something that we can use as a validation for why that is important and to make sure that uh, we also incorporate the digital heritage in our um, collections. So I, I I kind of see a little bit of that shift, and I think this will make it even stronger. As uh, Chronicles of Polish Demos scene, as, as I said, we are doing some uh, historical research. We are digging into the origins of uh, Polish Demos scene. Mm. We are doing some video preservation. Well, we, we are trying to dig up uh, some early Polish productions. We actually um, managed to dig up a couple that were considered last on the Mosul, so this is, this is, this is great. Um, and we actually have a first success that we have um, completed our application. Um, this, is, this is probably a breaking news for Breakpoint, so um, hi, y'all. But we sent the first draft of our application to the National uh, in Heritage Institute in Poland. So, fingers crossed. My only wish will be that everything will be protected, preserved for future generations. And uh, that's the only idea uh, that, are, that is driving us uh, around this project, but on a very more common view uh, within the association in France, uh, which is preserving everything about computing and video games and so on. Everything that is about, in fact, our digital life, digital culture. And demos, demo scene, is of course a very important, an artistic uh, part of our digital culture. So it's very important to preserve it and to be able to, uh, to show it to our children in 20, 30 more years. Yeah, so what's my motivation? Um, um, to do it. Um, it's not money, as you know. Um, I'm an advocate for digital culture, and I very much like the idea um, that the demo scene um, became already um, the first digital culture accepted um, by the UNESCO. And uh, that's something which um, I tried my whole professional life um, um, that um, to make the people aware about the cultural impact and the cultural meaning of digital um, technology. 
So after we heard a little bit about the motivations of some of the people, um, let's also look a little bit how everybody is involved. At least take uh, some bits and pieces here. The full version probably needs like a three hour edit, but let's have a look like in some directions. Yes, of course. I act as the national contact point for Switzerland. Um, and I try to push and coordinate things for Switzerland in general. Uh, we only just recent, recently recently gained some momentum with the whole campaign. And uh, yeah, I try to uh, push it forward. Uh, I was asked to join the project without, uh, not everybody knew about my exact uh, Devoskin history. But yeah, I jumped in and I've been helping in whatever I have been able to help with. I, I say Mark did a huge job with the application of writing. We we wouldn't we wouldn't be here without him because finding the guy who writes the application, that was the hardest job. For me it was easy. I was just I was just doodling around, I was just writing and telling everybody this is important. But uh, finding somebody who could put the words together, that was hard work. Yeah, well, I think Randall was great at kind of like making, how would I say, puzzle and <laughs> kind of um, getting the information for the people that are in the scene. Um, my role and approach was a little bit more structured. Um, I made a few surveys uh, that were for the demo seniors and those surveys with the first one we were asking that how would you kind of describe demo scene what does the scene itself think that the scene is which is important in the applications you need to have the community's idea of what the community is. So um, I did the surveys and I did them uh, with a collaboration with the other team, of course, you guys, and also with the um, uh, game museum people. And we did two surveys. One was where we kind of asked that, how do you, what do you think about the scene? How do you feel? how it's affected you. And another one was about application that Marco was uh, very, uh, well, thank you, Marco. It was very well written. It was, <laughs> you've made a huge, huge amount of work with that. But yeah, we asked an opinion about the application and if there is something that should be changed, because that is also very important. The community has to have approval for this. UNESCO will not accept something that the community doesn't want to be seen as a um, official cultural historical heritage. And the last year uh, when Philip uh, called me about this project, I uh, joined this and uh, we worked together with Flopin and by Cookies Demo Group and Paul Roney. France are uh, one of the country at the origin of Demosen. So we should uh, with uh, Demosen French communities to make uh, same like another country uh, to to uh, to this to make this. I think that's part of that momentum thing that I mentioned. Um, to be honest, without an active demo party, without a demo party that actually takes place in a country, it would be hard to to be um, on, on a list of living traditions because I think the, a big part of the demo scene being alive uh, is, is having a, a demo party in a country. So um, this kind of goes together with all the other activities that we do with, with um, more and new people, but also old people that uh, um, start to appear at our other events. We have demo meetups, we have demo shows, and I feel that there is 
a bit more going on recently in Switzerland. And all this plays well together with the idea of, of, of um, attacking this list of living traditions. We are working uh, on this project because we like it very much. It touches us uh, at a very uh, deepest layer of our, our, of our art because this is our life. This is our, our culture uh, within the demo scene. And I, I could say that I believe that in mainly every country that received the one day computers or video games, etc., you may find someone that wanted to, you know, to hack a computer, to hack it to his code, to cut something, to create something within this computer uh, with uh, its uh, imagination, his Im imagination. And uh, that's, that's, that's a way to tell that I believe that in every country around us, uh, maybe in Spain, maybe in Italy, of course, in Italy, uh, in many countries, you may found people uh, who created something, created video games, created demos, created uh, anything on, on those computers. And that's exactly what we, we try to, uh, to, to, to reach, in fact, those people. So if you knew these people, if you're watching this video from everywhere, anywhere you are in Europe or in the world, and you know people involved into creation, create, creation, creating uh, video games or uh, computer art, computer video games, uh, computer uh, software, anything, maybe uh, they should be interested by our project. So maybe you can help. Thank you. It's also meant to, to probably get in touch with people that we don't know yet or that are not active since a few years and, and probably uh, were there when the demo scene thing started in Switzerland. So that would be the, the most valuable um, uh, way of getting in touch with, with somebody that we didn't know beforehand. Sure. So uh, the uh, Polish application, it started uh, pretty much uh, after I joined. So it was this 2019 and it, it started slowly and we had a lot of, uh, a lot of issues uh, with, uh, you know, the, the local process. And, and basically it was all, uh, we were all ramping up. We didn't really have uh, a, a government, um, you know, cooperation experience or anything like that. And, and then for the, personal reasons, it, it, I, I put it on hold. And, and then we uh, kicked off again, thanks to uh, Kaya and Luisa, um, early 2020. And we uh, got some contacts, it, it, it uh, gained some traction. We uh, later on, late 2020, uh, made a association, um, Chronicles of Polish Demosin. And this was like an official start of the application process. Uh, we started doing a lot of um, historical research activities, preservation activities, uh, and uh, making this application, of course. And this is this is how it's been since six, seven months now. I'm um, I, I'm actually uh, trying to make art of coding visible in in some areas. So um, you mentioned that I'm um, that I'm also active with the Swiss community. I actually you. You probably will hear from from Shana and Unlock what's happening there. So I'm I'm a, a member of Echtzeit, as I, as I said. So uh, getting the, the the helping the the team there to to get the the paper written for for the Swiss application. So uh, obviously um, the others will probably take more lead role there, but I'm I'm happy to to jump in and and support wherever I can. However, I I try to um, uh, communicate and also in in writing what Art of Coding does and what the demo scene is and uh, kind of in increase the outreach even beyond the demo scene community because there's there's people who probably have never heard about demo scene. So I, I'm not getting tired of explaining to everyone in my environment uh, what the demo scene is and why it is so great. So I um, I uh, hope that I can lure in also more, more young people who are in the computing and art space uh, into the demo scene. I try to, um, as I said, write stuff about Art of Coding. So one of the recent things is um, I managed to get an article published in this one here. It's a German magazine called Return. The article is, uh, looks like that. And the good thing is um, we have um, the right to publish it 
on the Art of Coding website to increase outreach um, there. Um, this is downloadable on the Art of Coding website as we speak. And uh, I also write uh, stuff in English. I've uh, uh, written a, a publication for the Bridges Math Art Conference, which is kind of a little bit of an academic uh, more conference uh, in in Finland. It was supposed to happen last year. I wrote an article about Art of Coding there as well. And I try to do this more. And I actually want to encourage everyone to, to look uh, of, for opportunities in your environment, how you can do something like that as well. So if you have um, contact to an editor, to some people doing podcasts or video uh, podcasts or stuff like that, reach out to them and tell them, look, if you want to talk about demo scene, and learn about art of coding, talk to me in the local language uh, or in English and uh, then get the word out. I think that's a, that's a great opportunity that we have now with um, also an active uh, community uh, swarming into the Discord channel of Art of Coding. So we can multiply the outreach and communicate what's going on and make it happen. So when we were asked last year or two years ago, when we started with this idea, what, what, why should we care or why should we bother? Um, some of the reasons we always said is like, it's about the cultural history. It's about preserving the heritage. It's about also bringing new people in as many people find also important. And the question was oftentimes then, is there no money involved? And of course, from us as organizers, it's like the old demo scene address, whatever you do for the scene is, uh, is pro bono. Um, but of course, uh, hopefully this will, if member states accept you on a list or accept a demo scene on a list, then that is like a label which makes it more possible more probable to get accepted if you apply for grants or support or anything in that direction and so some people had also some opinions on that and that's actually great points to make reactions after the announcement or the beginning of the project those were from well they were completely opposite reactions of course some people were that okay this is bloody stupid why are you doing this this is waste of time the never skin it's it's not interesting for the public and so on and others were that okay this is kind of cool and uh, some were asking one one big point that people were making is that what use is this Can, uh, does somebody profit from this does somebody get money out of this or can somebody get money out of this and uh, hell i was that i i was uh, uh, like hands up that if somebody can get money by using out of coding and the unesco thing that's great <laughs> come on we have the finnish people have been in the demo demo parties in uh, in the nordic countries traveling to the demo parties and winning demo competitions just just to get the money, grab the money and run. Some people went to Norway with no money to come back. They had to win the party. They had to win the demo competition and get the prize money as ca in cash. So they could come home. Come on, that's capitalism. That was, <laughs> the, 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 that was all about the money, winning the competition and being able to come back home. <laughs> so, okay, there's money side there is no no money in it in the project by itself but if somebody can use it to get money or find an event or find some really artistic demo or create write get a fund to write a book about the machine okay do it you're welcome i i don't object yeah when i first heard about art of coding uh, i think two years ago i was completely thrilled i said this is exactly what i have been waiting for because uh i'm a i'm a big fan of preservation of uh, old hardware and and also software to some degree but i'm a big fan of preservation of, of hardware and i think this is a key point for the demo scene to have real uh hardware available for uh, running the prods so i would like to get involved in the preservation of hardware a lot and obviously i have been looking for opportunities to get this on very solid ground also from funding perspectives. And I think when Art of Coding uh, will be completely successful in the end with being uh, recognized uh, in even more countries uh, as 
um, uh, well, UNESCO recognized for the demo scene in the intangible cultural heritage, we will have a great opportunity of getting more official recognition and applying for grants for preservation projects. So this is why I'm looking forward to, to this and I'm getting active in that space to make that happen. But what will actually happen out of this um, after the country accepts the demo scene? So let's first look a little bit into how the process is working from the UNESCO side. Because if you have a look to, in, into the convention of the intangible cultural heritage, which all the countries um, has signed, um, um, which provides such uh, um, registers, such lists, um, there are two articles, uh, Article 13 and 14, which describe the obligations of the states and countries uh, which has signed um, this convention um, and um, the responsibilities they now have for all the cultures they have accepted as their national cultural heritage. And this is an impressive um, scope, which is uh, open there. And um, it's not directly um, combined with, with money or uh, other concrete resources. It's a kind of um, a framework which is described in the um, convention and it's up to every country, every uh, signee um, to, to, to um, dis decide how to implement um, this framework into national guidelines and of course programs. And um, um, as we have um, understood now after um, being listed in Germany is that at least in Germany this decision uh, is still um, not um, um, happened, has still not happened. Um, um, Germany signed the convention in 2013, uh, meanwhile had put um, 120 cultures on their national um, intangible cultural uh, list. Um, but until now, it's not finally decided how to support these cultures. And um, it's a process which is running. Um, on the one hand, of course, it's, uh, could say that's bad because what should that then, uh, for what should it be all about? On the other hand, um, um, there will be a decision. And um, because it's not uh, done already, we have chances to um, to suggest um, um, this implementation and uh, uh, make suggestions, um, um, especially in regards of uh, digital cultures. And um, so um, it became an exciting uh, situ situation here in Germany. So this is very Germany specific, but still as we just uh, got a success like uh, a week ago and reached out also for first, e first emails to UNESCO. This is like something what they told us that it's again, the implementation is just happening. So we will uh, be invited in May to join a seminar and see where things are going from there. I mean, it is an ongoing conversation and uh, yeah, there will be some complexity involved. But uh, if you're interested, again, join the Art of Coding Discord and you will be kept there um, and join, of course, our um, meetups on once a month, uh, usually first Monday in the month. So uh, on the Art of Coding Discord. So let's switch a little bit to the practical perspective. So what is happening next? Or also what are recommendations from people who worked on stuff or have insights in that? Um, so let's have a look into experiences from Finland. Well, First of all, by, by this experience, um, it's good to realize that there are and there need to be different roles. So not everybody needs to do and is at home doing the same thing. So I wasn't like much into this PR and publicity. Um, then uh, somebody else wouldn't want to write the text. So uh, you, need, it's, you need somebody for each role, but uh, it doesn't need to be one person doing doing everything and the group dynamics of course 
are very important and um, about the application like it's not so much text uh, I guess it depends uh, on the country but at least the Finnish application is relatively short and there's a ready-made template so it's really nothing to be so scared of so it's not like a, like tens of pages that you you would be writing and uh, one thing I had in mind when writing the text myself was that um, this would be indeed about the whole Finnish scene and not just some like uh, stars and hit productions. Uh, I tried to encompass uh, like everybody as much as possible because there's been there's been so many people involved uh, throughout the years that, uh, that everybody, everybody kind of kind of um, everybody should be represented and get their voice heard in an application like this instead of just some like vocal people or the or the big stars of, of the local scenes kind of people with different kind of um well aspirations and uh kind of like different people want to do different things and you should get different kind of kinds of people and also i would say that you don't have to do things so like strictly academically and um, myself I promoted the questionnaires in some demo parties I made videos to promote them and put them as entries so make it fun make it demos in it's you don't have to make it too official this can be also fun keep it fun that that's the point uh, because uh, it can be Quite a lot of work, but it's not impossible work, and it's interesting work. Finding the information, creating the information, maybe getting uh, getting help for from outside. Yeah, keep it fun, keep keep it demo skin like. And uh, if you find the team, the few let's say a few people who support each other, you will get the motivation to keep on going, and that way. <laughs> the project doesn't stall. It's, uh, it can't stall if there's only one person, two persons who are working on it, and then it's too much work. But when you find the magical guy who, write, who is good writing the application, or you can uh, make a few online events with people giving feedback and uh, commenting, like we did with the uh, FCAMP event, with workshops on workshops on site and on uh, on uh, remote visitors also writing on the google document so we got a lot of feedback from the people and that helped a lot let's speak about the future so in terms of looking into uh, how the process on one hand is between the different countries and this whole thing what does it mean as apparently we as demo scenes of course we would like just to file one application, UNESCO done, put a stamp on it, and that's it. And But that's not the logic how the UNESCO functions and also that, of course, you have to go via sometimes the regions, then to the member states, and from the states, actually, it goes then later on to an international level. And, um, and I first detested that part, but now actually looking into it, it's very interesting what still is there to be discovered or rediscovered actually if you look at also from a national perspective even though i think all of us as seniors identify usually as people of an international scene or a transnational scene and uh, yeah but let's look into the process and also what seniors have maybe to say you or to share what they believe why this is important and uh, why you should be motivated to join us on this soon this is a call to everybody in Switzerland to, to support us by filling the survey uh, and maybe accept to be interviewed uh, so that we can listen to your story. And um, also whoever might want to play a more active role in, in, this, in this campaign, um, kindly ask to conduct us through our website. We, of course, accept all the help and support we can get. So whoever... Uh, uh, listens to this and, and thinks that he, he or she can support us. Just let us know and uh, we'll be happy about it. Thank you.
Um, so in Germany, we have submitted our application end of 2019, in October 2019, and only two weeks ago, um, we uh, succeeded with um, the listing. And that means one and a half year uh, uh, in between submitting the application and uh, becoming a, uh, granted the application. And uh, that's only in one country. And um, that means um, um, we have to wait for other um, countries as well. Um, um, the acceptance in Germany was a milestone, um, not in the same sense like um, the acceptance in Finland last year was a milestone because that was really the first time a digital culture was accepted as uh, intangible cultural heritage. But um, the milestone related to the German listing is that um, it's a second country. And that's the proof that um, the scene, of course, is a transnational um, um, community and um, that our um, first approach to go for a transnational international application um, is a reasonable one and a plausible one. And um, in UNESCO uh, terms, it's um, the more countries are um, behind an international application, the more serious um, this um, application is and the more likely it is that it is um, accepted. Transnational culture, you need a transnational uh, application. Uh, what else? And um, so we should wait until one or two other uh, countries uh, has also listed the uh, scene as their intangible cultural heritage. And um, then we will start um, approaching them, asking them, is there somebody of you um, who wants to go to uh, uh, wants to lead and so the chances to find somebody who will say yes I'm I'm the lead of course are uh, raising the more countries has listed the scene and so after three four countries has listed it then we start this international initiative there's still enough time that other countries can join and therefore I encourage everybody who um, is already working in other countries on applications or might think that uh, it's a good idea to 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 start or join such an initiative to do it um, every national initiatives helps um, um, the international application and also the chances that um, the national application uh, will succeed are raising with every national listing which already has taken place in my opinion i can see that uh, many coders are open-minded and reveal more secrets about their demo than before as uh, we see in the free software community there is a need to open up more the code to improve knowledge sharing Thanks to emergence of the new tools that allows a lower tech gap on how loads machine and uh, it's nice and innovative way. I, I have uh, already forgo any any attempts to uh, to see into the future. But what I would hope for is um, first of all more diversity. Um, we 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 made some progress with. Uh, getting more women on board, but I actually think of it in a broader terms as well, because, you know, demo scene is, is inherently European. Really, we had some we had some demo scene activity in Australia and Peru and, and uh, US and, and all that. But um, I would actually love to see more diverse perspectives and, and reaching out of course, to women, but also to uh, different regions. And uh, one of the things that is actually on my mind very, a lot is how to attract new talent when they have so many options. Um, the kids these days, they're doing game jams, they're, they're doing like they have this commercial mindset. And I'd love to see how we will collectively as a, you know, this decentralized force um, navigate in a way that will attract uh, young people. 
that that's that's something I have no answer to right now, but I'd love to see how it happens. I see um, exhibitions, demos in art exhibitions in institutions like Giasma. And I don't think that's going to be even 20 years. It's going to be faster. And demos in as seen as art and totally art of coding. It's like paint, painting, like coding can be as like making an art piece as you have a brush, but you have a code and you make your art piece with that. So I also see a shift in thought process about cultural, historical heritage and understanding of what our current cultural, historical uh, heritage is and how much it's going to it's going to be shifting towards the digital material. So that's what I think. It's a maker culture. It's about crafting, inventing. It's about people, social interaction. So it's, a, it's people tinkering with hardware and code, but make, finding sometimes new ways to use tools, things. They might not always be even digital. They can Come on, people have done a demo with what's the Pirto hating in English. Can you remember? Overhead projector. Yeah, they have been doing demos with overhead projector, and that was that was so beautiful. They have drawing competitions in uh, in parties. There is so much tinkering with the demos that can be done and. Uh, to think back, back in 86, it was enough. It was cool when we had a music, a picture, and a scroll text. And in the 90s, things, things were getting so advanced. In 2000s, later, it's been you know, even, even more fantastic. So, okay, what they are doing in 20, 2030 or 2040? Probably weird stuff that we can't even see in the YouTube or Holotube or 3D tube or whatever brain tube there is because you have some weird hardware, weird hardware in your brain. You can't, <laughs> I can't even imagine what they are doing, but I hope that in 20 years they are still doing innovations, changes, they are finding new frontiers to be preached, creating new styles. So what I hope that will happen in 20 years, what I hope from you people doing demos back then, fuck my mind and make it explode. Uh, trying to increase now is to collect all the activities and publications out there in the world and, and have a more, more um, well, comprehensive picture of, of the publications in, in the world about the demo scene and art of coding. So if you have uh, something that you think should be on the press section of art of coding, send it to us, post it in the Discord. We will make sure that we have a more, um, more regular update cycle for the website so that we can publish the stuff. And if you want to embark on a project about talking or writing about art of coding and the demo scene, let me know if I can help. Uh, please get in touch via Discord or, or email. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to support and, and get you started. And yeah, obviously, yeah, you're, you're already listening. So you're interested, that's good. So if you want to get active, join the Discord and uh, yeah, just make it happen together with the great community of Art of Coding and everyone involved. Thank you all of you for listening to this uh, seminar about Demoscene, the Art of Coding, everybody who helped at Digitale Kultur e.V., um, everybody who uh, supported us internationally over the years, uh, my partner in crime, Andreas Lange, uh, Steam, who helped like, with the original draft very much uh, for the German application text. And there's many, many more people to mention you will see now hopefully in the scroll text slowly moving by and uh, yeah that's it for this year uh, join again the art of coding discord i think that's super important and again let's not forget whoever has been 
helping us over time uh, in the Finnish Museum for Games and all the institutions which are already as, uh, in, interested to support more and uh, and also for you uh, spending your time on this seminar uh, at Revision 2021. Thank you very much. I'm Tobias, Dedo of Didax Melkor, and uh, I hope to see you in a year, hopefully physically again. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Warm greetings to all your sofa centers around the world. Enjoy Revision. Enjoy, um, enjoy your life. Keep coding. Keep doing art. <laughs>